we uh, just want to take a moment here. Uh, we have uh, Lake County Commissioner Jerry Serino here this morning. He's going to provide us with an update on Lake County and their experience with uh, the coronavirus pandemic. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you. Talk from here? Sure, anywhere you're comfortable. Okay. Yep. Okay. I might as well just stay here. Okay. Sure. Yep. If you don't mind. Now, commissioners, thank you for uh, the opportunity to be here with you. Uh, this is a first for me. I've never been to a commissioner's meeting as a commissioner uh, in another county, so uh, uh, it's, a, it's a privilege to, uh, to be here. And as, as you all know, Lake and Geauga counties, besides being neighbors, uh, we share a lot of programs together and a lot of the same uh, qualified people that, that serve a lot of our not-for-profits uh, work together. So, uh, And we have shared lots of information previously uh, in the past, so we certainly wanted to encourage that, and that's why I'm here today. Uh, and also, on behalf of my colleagues who are, we are going to be meeting at 10 o'clock this morning uh, in Painesville, I uh, would like to reciprocate and offer you the opportunity to come, all of you or some of you, uh, to come and, uh, and let us know what you're up to, and uh, particularly when we go back in the public session, which probably will be mid-June or, or thereabouts. Absolutely. I uh, just wanted to share with you a few things and uh, realizing that every county is responding a little differently. There's some different twists depending on the... Uh, uh, and a lot of the individual circumstances, but we started uh, planning for um, what we thought was going to be the case uh, in early March with what, uh, how we were going to run the county operations. Is, is I think you all know we, we are occupying a new building, uh, which we uh, began occupying in September. Um, and thank goodness this didn't happen right in the middle of the transition. It would have been a real tough thing to do. Uh, but it made it a little bit easier for us to uh, restrict uh, flow of people in and out of the building uh, and so on. So we, we, uh, we, were, uh, we had planned on uh, the restrictions that we ended up putting in place uh, in, in mid-March uh, with uh, uh, identifying a single point of entry for not employees for the public that needed to come in. And we had been working up until, uh, and it will be the case until tomorrow, uh, appointment only visits by the public. Uh, the challenge uh, is I think you would have the same situation is that um, the auditor and the recorder's offices, uh, we, uh, it was, as uh, Commissioner DeVorek would, uh, would appreciate in the real estate business, we didn't want to interrupt the flow of title transfers, etc., cetera, and filings. Um, so we had a little, a few details to work out uh, that was a little frustrating for some of the people attempting to do business on records uh, in the records retention area. But we were able to work through that and uh, put in a drop box immediately uh, for everybody to drop off anything that needed to go to the county. And then we had people checking in hourly and making sure that it was directed <coughs> to the right department to, uh, to keep the flow going. And we got that worked out pretty well. Um, we also had our buildings and ground staff, since we're pretty much all in one place now, uh, building the ground staff to really redouble their efforts to uh, make sure everything was uh, constantly clean and sanitized, which they are continuing to do. Uh, and uh, so far that, that has uh, appeared to have, to have worked out very well. Um, but again, our, our focus, as I'm sure yours has been, was to not interrupt the service to the community uh, as much as possible. There certainly was some interruption and some inconvenience, but that was unavoidable uh, from everything that we decided to do. So we're uh, uh, issuing a press release today uh, that uh, June 1st we're going to be opening up the buildings. Uh, face coverings will be recommended. Um, we have uh, in our main entrance uh, we have a sheriff's deputy sitting at the desk who will be logging people in and checking temperatures. He will also have a supply of masks for those who wish to do that. Uh, and. Um, we are encouraging still appointments in advance, but unlike the way we've been doing it up until tomorrow, actually, uh, we are not requiring appointments. So the sheriff's deputy will simply call the department, um, and because it's difficult to navigate into the old building, which is connected to the new one, so we don't want people wandering around. So we will be escorting people uh, back and forth here, um, and um, we'll be limiting uh, the elevators. Uh, unfortunately. The original rule was one person per elevator, uh, which in our chambers is on the fifth floor, uh, and it's a lot of stairs for people to take, so uh, including, present company included. Uh, and so uh, we've, uh, we're changing it to three people per elevator, again with, with uh, face coverings uh, of some type recommended. Um, and so we're going to revisit this 
later in June and determine if we want to loosen up the policy at all. We're going to be looking for information from our health district. We've worked very closely with the health district and as sometimes the public gets confused, the health district is not part of county government. Mm -hmm. They're an extension, as you know, an extension of the state health department. Uh, but we work very closely together. We, we, in fact, they're coming to our meeting this, this morning uh, and will be uh, updating us on their plans uh, for tracing, uh, contact tracing, because there's a lot of confusion about what that is and what it's, where the information's going to flow and that sort of thing. So we work very closely together through this whole process with uh, daily conference calls that many of the administration have been having with the health district. Um, so uh, again, we think we think it's it's uh, from a health perspective, it's it's gone well, um, and I know our administrator and your administrator spend a lot of time talking to each other probably once a day uh, <laughs> to to share information, which is fabulous. That's great to have. Um, on the economic side of the equation, which is one we're all pretty much thinking a lot about these days. Uh, and again, I think it mirrors probably what you've experienced in Jaga, is it, this has been devastating economically to our businesses uh, in, in different ways depending on the business, and it, it is devastating to us from a sales tax perspective. Uh, and so we've been, uh, uh, throughout this whole two and a half months, been talking very um, regularly with our business owners, uh, restaurants, uh, we have a lot of aerospace machine companies uh, who, while they were allowed to operate, their customers have gone away. Mm -hmm. So continuing to operate is a moot point for many of them because the, uh, the downstream impact of air, air travel being reduced, you know, Wall Street Journal reported today they're going to get rid of 13,000 people because of the reduction in air travel. Uh, and that's going to trickle down to machine shops who are making parts for Boeing and other aircraft companies, including GE engines. So uh, we, we, we have not yet really seen the devastation to the economy locally because there hasn't been enough time to really see all of the impacts here. One of the things that, that we're doing is we we're, we're given a special grant, as many of the counties were, uh, from HUD of uh, over eight, about $822,000 as a special addendum to last year's Community Development Block Grant program. And so we were faced with, what do we do with that money? How can we, it was, it was supposed to be COVID, spent on COVID-related issues. So we sat, the three commissioners, and we, we, we decided that we really wanted to use the money to help small businesses. Those that didn't qualify for PPE or PPP, uh, or didn't uh, get SBA loans qualified and other, other uh, remedies. And so uh, we are launching this week a uh, program. We're going to be spending 700000 of that 822 on loans and grants to small businesses. Mm -hmm. The loans will be up to $20,000. Uh, we've structured the loans uh, in, in a, once if someone is qualified that uh, they are five-year loans, basically a term loan. Uh, there are no payments in between. It's a balloon payment at the end no fees to start up, and no interest payments. And we actually have an incentive for every year they pay the principal early. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's a meaningful uh, incentive to, to pay back the loans. Uh, we have a, established a, a loan committee uh, that is headed up by a guy who is our um, Port Authority acting director right now who spent uh, 40 years working in the bank. Mm -hmm. So uh, Tim Cahill is very, very qualified. Uh, because we're going to we're going to require credit worthiness, obviously, and probably personal guarantees uh, for some of these for most of these loans, if not all of them. Uh, so we want to go through a good process, and we don't want to lend money to to a business that is going to go out of business in three months. Mm -hmm. So viability will be something that we uh, we also look into. On the very small side, or what we call the micro businesses, we're going to be doing grants of up of up to five thousand um, dollars. That obviously, by, by definition, will not have to be paid back. So there'll be no fees to sign up. We will have a separate committee evaluating those. Um, and and again, that's coming out of the same pool of money? That, yes, yeah. yes, yeah. It's out of the 700. Um, and um, so, again, we'll have some credit worthiness, but not as tightly as we would for the, for the loan. Uh, and um, 
but it's a separate committee that's going to be looking at those. Again, we want to make sure that if we um, loan, uh, give a grant of $5,000 to a business that has three employees, we want to make sure that they're not going to go bankrupt, you know, pay off some bills or pay themselves a bonus, which would not happen, uh, and then go out of business. And then, you know, we really haven't invested the money well. So we're going to be uh, watching that very carefully. We've uh, been talking to the, we have three chambers of commerce in Lake County, uh, with Mentor being the largest. And so we've been on conference calls with their members so that we get the word out. Um, and unfortunately, Mentor businesses can't qualify because they have their own HUD uh, district. So you can't do both. Uh, but we really think that this is going to help a number of businesses stay, stay alive. The main purpose is, is to maintain employment levels. Because if we can't maintain employment levels, uh, we're going to have a real big, much bigger problem than we, uh, we might otherwise have here. Um, so we also have doing some fiscal things, and uh, these I think uh, I know you uh, will appreciate, is that uh, we've, we initiated uh, at the beginning of this month the hiring freeze. And any exceptions to the hiring freeze have to get approved by all three commissioners, or by two of the commissioners at least. Um, we've uh, delayed and put off any capital projects uh, and purchases of any non-essential equipment. Mm -hmm. uh, those are just good, you know, fiscal things to do. We've also alerted um, every department and every other elected official's office that uh, we are asking them to, to do it. The departments that we control, we're not asking them, we're telling them. Mm -hmm. The elected officials were asking for their cooperation uh, for a, uh, what amounts to a 5% annualized reduction in their run rate, which means to get there, you have to be 10% for the second half of this year. Um, and uh, so far, we've had a uh, pretty, pretty positive response. Nobody wants to do it. Nobody will like it. But it's something that we have to do. And the reason we're, we're, we're taking that action proactively is uh, simply because we're the, the, the sales tax data, as you all know, is lag, lagged behind by a quarter. And so we still don't know. We have an a pretty good, we have a good feeling for March, which was not a full month of impact. But we have a really good feeling that May and June are going to be about 25% differences uh, from, from prior year. Uh, and uh, and that's, that's, that's going to be big. That's big. The big variable, of course, is we don't know what the rate of recovery is going to be like. Mm -hmm. How long will it stay at 25%? Or will it start to decline? Well, with those unemployment numbers, that'll be the, the litmus test. Yeah. If they hover out there and don't change much, that, right. you know, that spending's going to, you know, everyone's, you know, made it through this far over a few months, but that'll, right. that'll decline quickly, I'm sure. And I was, uh, I was out looking at some retail establishments and out to several restaurants over the long weekend, and uh, I did not see the recovery. <laughs> I mean, restaurants were simply not busy. I expected them to be jammed. Mm -hmm. Uh, but the spacing and the, the fear factor of people concerned about going in. Uh, even though I was impressed with, I went to yours truly and Mentor, and uh, mm -hmm. Jeff Shibley is a friend of mine, and you know, uh, they have plastic between booths and they have spacing of, you know, of tables. I sat outside practically in the parking lot, uh, which my wife loved. Uh, and, and so it was, it was set up safely, I think, as about as safely as you can get. But people, I think, are still reluctant to go in, mm -hmm. uh, and and it will take some time for people to get comfortable. Mm -hmm. And uh, and but it's going to be a, a longer recovery than I think uh, some some of us may have thought. Um, so but again, we're working very closely with our businesses to try to help them in any way that we possibly can. Um, we're uh, we're concerned about actually we're we're very concerned about next year which we start budgeting, I don't know when you do your budgets, but uh, we start budget hearings normally in January. We're going to accelerate them into uh, November and December this year, uh, just to give us a little bit more of a heads up. And hey, when's our first date? Uh, we usually do ours uh, towards the end of August, September. Yeah. So Some you, of you, you start hearings then? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, that's, that's great. That's a, that's a head start. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to accelerate ours a little bit uh, into November and December. Uh, and uh, and, and I'm, I'm very concerned. We won't know until we see what the run rate looks like for June, July, and August, what next year's forecast is going to look like, but I, I fear that it's going to be significant. 
and that we're going to have to, uh, you know, since we can't print money like they do in Washington, mm -hmm. um, although we would like to, um, you know, it's 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 going to be a going to be a challenge here. The last point I want to bring up is that uh, you've had questions. We have in our commissioners' meetings. Um, we do our meetings uh, live streaming, so we get you know, we get questions emailed to us. Um, people have asked about uh, property tax payments, uh, and because I know there are seven or eight counties in Ohio that have announced delays in tax uh, payments uh, for the uh, July um, collection period. And uh, the commissioners, of course, we don't have any say so in that. It's up to the auditor and the treasurer. But we have opinions, and uh, we had we had a spirited discussion last, over the last couple of weeks on that. Uh, my personal view is is not to extend the the the, uh, the payment period because that will benefit a lot of people that don't need the benefit. Okay, uh, I estimate about eighty percent of, of people in Lake County probably don't aren't experiencing significant issues and need a thirty or sixty day delay because that has a downstream impact on payments to school systems and every levy that's that's in the county. Uh, and that has to be addressed. Uh, what we are going to, what we have recommended to the auditor and the treasurer is that that uh, there be a process in place, um, sort of like the Board of Revision, which exists today. I happen to be the representative on the Board of Revision. We review hardship cases all the time, right, or excuses for why someone is late, and we waive payments or waive penalties and interest. So in our, in our mailer that goes out with the tax bills around the middle of next month, uh, we're going to have a notification in there that the treasurer and the auditor are working on, uh, whereby um, if somebody has lost their job and really can't make their payment, that uh, they don't want to get on some kind of a payment plan or a deferral, uh, that they can show cause, proof of that. Uh, probably no more complicated than applying for uh, unemployment. Uh, and that the, uh, the treasurer and the auditor and the board of revision as a group will allow them that flexibility. So we're really allowing and helping those that really need it, not extending the uh, payment period for everybody in the county, which just to me doesn't make sense. So I don't know if you consider that or have been asked about that, but, but that's, uh, again, the final decision is the auditor and the treasurer, but we've weighed in, and I think we have sort of an agreement that uh, that's the, the right way to go in order to help people who do need help um, and, and not punishing them mm -hmm. certainly along the way. So that's, uh, that, that's my quick summary of what we've done. Uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions if, if I talked too fast uh, or didn't go into something in, in amount of detail. But uh, I appreciate the opportunity to share with you kind of what we've been doing. And I would really uh, encourage you and invite you to come to one of our meetings as well. Yeah, we, we appreciate you being here, and uh, again, <clears throat> you know, you've said it, we, we partner in a lot of different ways, and not just being neighbors, and working together, and very similar in a lot of different ways. What, one of the questions I had was um, about the, the about the um, the grant money, and then the loan right. money was, and we're, we're doing something similar. I don't, I don't believe we qualified for a whole lot of HUD money, though, right? Uh, no, Lake County, we're, we're different from Lake County. Yeah. And Lake County gets theirs directly from HUD, all, our, all of ours flows to the state. Okay. Yeah, I, I checked that out. I called the um, state um, committee, or um, development of economic, but Ben Kepler, he says Lake County is an entitlement county. They get their money directly from the feds. Joggy County is allocation county. Okay. So it's like, okay. why? Right. Okay. You know. Well, you, you know, we've, we've had some other um, talks, you know, re re revolving around different uh, programs that we have through economic development and, and uh, putting that money to good use and local funds that we have. And, um, you know, I think one of the things we've bumped into just recently is trying to see who fits or qualifies. You know, you did it right on the head. You don't, we don't want to be handing out money to maybe somebody that doesn't necessarily need the money, right. you know. Um, but it, at the same time, making it available you know, to try and pick who gets it and who doesn't. I think that's been our, that, that was our speed bump right now, and we're still working through that, trying to figure out, um, you know, the qualifications. But I was wondering if you had any thought into how you were going to administer that. Yeah, the, the loan program, the yeah. grant program? Yeah. Uh, we, again, we'll have a qualifying standing committee evaluating and making the grants. Mm -hmm. uh, we have our, uh, our, the, 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 uh, our planning uh, uh, department, 
manages our community development block grant fund program okay. because we have normally throughout the year. So this is just really an addendum to last year's number. They decided to throw in another 822 grand into mm -hmm. it. So the same people that are administering our normal block grant programs will administer this program. I see. Okay. So, so, it's so yeah. and, and that's why we wanted to get away from monthly payments and chasing down people who were late. Mm -hmm. It's like you know we're not a bank. Mm -hmm. uh, we're not you know we're not Mastercard. Uh, so we just set it up so that you know you, you're, for the loans your repayment is a balloon payment at the end, mm -hmm. and we'll adjudicate those when the time comes. I see. But we don't have to have higher staff to you know monitor loans. The I did want to mention just before I, I let you back to your, your other work, um, that the, there's a bill in Columbus, as you all know, floating around uh, relative to monies that would come back to local governments. Mm -hmm. uh, I just got a report this morning that, um, you know, it's, uh, it's kind of languishing in the House right now. Uh, they're expecting some more hearings next week. Uh, and that is about the methodology that will be used to distribute the federal funding from the relief fund that, that was passed by Congress in March, mm -hmm. actually. So um, we may get some additional relief in the county, and you know, um, I suppose there's going to be options available as to how you can make that available to businesses, like sort of like what we're doing here. Mm -hmm. But we don't know how much is coming, and we don't know what the strings attached are going to be. Right. So hopefully there'll be some relief sometime in the next couple of weeks. Pretty good. Okay. Gentlemen, thank, thank you very much. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Yes, very my, much. My pleasure. Have a good one. Yeah. Okay. No.